Hi everybody. Welcome to Dandelion Cottage. Today is Watercolor Wednesday. And I'm Leslie Watkins. Thank you for joining me today. It's a beautiful day, finally. It's just, it couldn't be nicer. And I was out earlier and there were a lot of different flowers in the garden to choose from. But um, the one I did select was this. So this is the Prairie Fire Crab Apple. And, uh, and I just found this one branch that had opened up that was lower to the ground, so it was uh, closer to a heat source. Uh, the rest of it's still in bud. And when these trees finally do blossom and open up, they're spectacular. So, um, so I thought I would share that with you today. So let's get started. So the, um, the prairie fire crab apple is known for its beautiful crimson blossoms and also for this beautiful red tinge to its leaves. Isn't that beautiful? So let's just... I have a little scrap of paper here. I'm going to be using hot press paper. And I already have a kind of a, a sketch blocked out on it, but the paper's a little bit too long. So I'm just going to tear off this end of it. I'm just gonna go back and forth a couple of times. If you, if you have a bone folder, they're particularly useful for this job. And all I'm doing is I'm breaking down the fibers of the paper so that when I tear it, it will tear along that, that line. Now, depending on your weather conditions, you may have to do it a little more. Um, so for instance, here in New England, it's a, there's a, a bit of humidity in the air, so it's going to take a little, little bit longer to get that fold. And this, this little piece is great for sentiment, so I would save that. All right, so here is our image. Now, I see that on this particular piece of paper, I also have a cut edge, and I don't, I don't want that cut edge. So I'm just going to fold, do the same thing along there. I want, I want the torn edge so it looks like a natural decal. So a decal is the natural edge that's formed when the paper is made. And when you're doing fine art watercolor, the deckled edge is desirable. So I'm gonna just give this a little tear, just go along this edge like so. There. Okay, so now so now I have a nice rough edge all around. Okay. So here's my specimen. And when I look at these flowers, I see that they have five petals and there are what looks to be about two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, maybe fourteen to sixteen little um, anthers in the center. The leaves have a have a slight serrated edge, and what's very attractive are these little stems to the flowers are also red, as is the bark on the on the branch itself has a has a reddish reddish tinge to it. So we're gonna to try to capture some of those details. I'm using watercolor today and just red, yellow, and blue. And I 
actually, if you're if you're on my email list, and here's the website again, you would have received an announcement yesterday for a special flash watercolor class that's coming right up in about a week from now. Um, you have until the 29th to register for it, and the um, it's part of the sailing home shadow box lesson so in this class i'm going to be showing you how to paint a seascape and in the seascape we're going to be using the various elements used in watercolor painting for uh, landscape painting such as atmospheric perspective and um and actually quite a bit more so if you're interested in that please go to dandelioncottagedesign.com and subscribe to Notes from Dandelion Cottage, and that will get you on the list so that you can be alerted to all of the watercolor and paper crafting classes that I have coming up. So, let me just get rid of this so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna try to zoom you in a little bit. There we go. All right. So I have, I have a loose sketch on here indicating where I want my image to be. And I just want to sort of design this. To fit that area. I've really been enjoying all the birds lately. They are, they're in the orchard looking for places for their nests. A lot of them have already built nests. I saw a hummingbird for the first time in my garden yesterday. Where I live, we typically see them after Memorial Day, so he was right on time. hear a toey right now. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's drink your tea, drink your tea. You hear that? So sweet. Okay, so now I'm just taking, I'm going to be working from light to dark. So I'm mixing up a dilute mixture of the red it's got a little bit of blue in it to cool it down and I'm just painting a, a kind of an underpainting here And I'm going to take some green, and I'm going to let that red mix in with it so it's kind of a, a muted down green. Like so. And today I'm just sort of using a dry brush. And I'm um, preserving a, uh, a sketchy quality to the drawing because, uh, because that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Sometimes there's no good, there's no better answer than because that's what I want. Okay. Now I want to get the uh, structure in there. 
of the branch. Get a little more red into that mixture. There we go. So basically I'm just I'm I'm drawing with the brush. Looking at the, the shapes of the leaves getting them pointing in the in the right direction. Fix that one. There we go. And I want to get some of these beautiful stems. In the watercolor class, I'll be talking a lot more about my uh, different colors that I use, the tools, how you can set up an area so that you've got good light, the, the different kinds of papers. So there's, there's going to be a lot of information that will help to equip you with, uh, with good decision making when it comes time to get some of your own supplies. There we go. So that's what it looks like at this point. Just kind of loose and uh, impressionistic. I haven't really co fully committed to too much at this point. So now that I have it set up, I'm going to begin to develop some of the areas that I want to be darker. So over here is one. There's some beautiful buds here. Capture those. And if I look closely at some of these leaves, You can see some of the edges have a almost like a, a red outline and they have these beautiful little serrated edges. I think you can see that pretty well. So in order to capture that, I'm just going to mix up some some green and this is just a basic medium green, yellow and blue, and to that mixture I'm going to add just a dash of red. So for instance if I wanted to put that here I can just go around the edge of the leaf and just indicate that little serrated effect. And I can add some veins and get the center fold. Begin to get it, like so. Okay, 
So just a, just a few little strokes, doesn't take much, you can do this. Do the same thing over here. There we go. And if I take a stronger violet mixture, just mixing the, the red and the blue together. I can get these rich accents here and there. Okay, so I think you can see how that develops. And to tell you the truth, at this point, I'm, I'm not even looking at the specimen. I'm just I'm designing as I go. Um, I always refer back to nature as a reference, but I'm in for this for the purpose of this card. This is going to be a card, by the way. I want. I want the design to flow nicely in the in the area of the cover of the card. And I can start to model these leaves a little bit. I'll be talking more about light and shade in the class, which is essential. Uh oh, I hear, I think I hear the uh, UPS is coming. I've been waiting for a bunch of deliveries, so it sounds like they might be here. You can hear the big dog barking, Buster. Right, so I think you can you can see how that's starting to turn into something. Here's my package. Thank you. Keeping it real here, folks. <laughs> Okay, so, all right, so we've been doing this about 20 minutes, and um, I think you'll agree that this would make for a very attractive card front. Now, once these areas dry a little more, it's still, it's still wet here and there, I can go back in and I can begin to add some of the yellow stamens. So let me see if I can just add a couple. So just using the tip of the brush, I'm just kind of indicating the area where they would be. I'm not getting caught up in a, in a lot of detail. Of course, that's a relative statement. You may think this is a lot of detail, but I think uh, I think it's a kind of a nice. I look to try to keep a nice balance of attention to detail and spontaneity. And I'm going to increase the the green element a little bit in these leaves so that they don't look too gray. You red, when you mix uh, red with green, you get a gray tone. And then finally, what I would do is I would take a stronger mixture of the red 
and just put some of these darker accents in there. Okay. So I, I hope I hope you got some ideas about how to begin a little uh, painting of a crab apple blossom, and the uh, the apples and the uh, actually a lot of the family. I believe that um, we're talking about the uh, prunus family here, but also the rose family often has five petals, and many of these blossoms look similar. So I would just go ahead and use this. Uh, approach to begin any of them. Uh, if you if you do decide to go out and uh, find a specimen and paint it, I'd love to see what you do. I have a watercolor group on this Facebook page where you can post your images. So um, just let me know if you'd like to be a member of that group. We'd love to have you. And uh, remember to subscribe to Notes at dandelioncottagedesign.com and I will get all of the monthly class listings out to you. So have a wonderful day, stay creative, stay well, and I hope to see you soon. That's all for now. Bye-bye.